You know what the best way to make someone mad is still in 2020 for some reason? Mention Black Ops 4 Zombies. People to this day still try to purely get others to hate on it, hoping that nothing from that iteration of the mode ever comes back. I hate to break it to people like that, but Black Ops 4 Zombies is actually a good game mode. What Lucifer's ball sack was that? I didn't misspeak and I meant what I said. It is a good game mode, as long as you ignore the blue screens. Now, as much as the mode does a lot of good things, there is a caveat to all of this. It is a failure as a zombie's iteration. Now, for the loudest funny IQ level people watching this who are confused, let me explain. If you look at BO4 Zombies independently, like this was the first time the mode ever existed. It performs well, and there would be no complaints about it whatsoever. However, when you put it in the already defined genre of what Call of Duty Zombies is, too much of the base formula changed. For the rest of this video, we're going to be looking at that perspective more in depth and even explain why BO4 Zombies was actually needed for the future of the COD Zombie genre. When it comes to COD Zombies, the base of the mode was built upon survival and high rounding. As the mode evolved over the years since World of War, Easter eggs gained more popularity and slowly had more design elements implemented for them. The balance between Easter eggs and the core gameplay of survival and high rounding was in an equilibrium of recent titles until Black Ops 4, however. EO4 Zombies is designed for those who wish to experience a story or do a quest, aka Easter eggs, over the core gameplay elements of what the mode was built upon. Look, pause side note here. The game did go through development hell, as we all know by now. So many decisions may have been chosen because there was no time to do different versions of what they wanted, so they had to go with what at least was functional. Something just to keep note of throughout this entire discussion. The imbalance came around because of a lot of features that were added so that way casual players or people of lower skill level could continue to survive and play the game so that way they could enjoy the story elements. Here is where we begin diving into the failed success idea, because if you are someone who wants to enjoy a story experience, or essentially a campaign mode in a game with no campaign mode, you can go do that with this iteration of zombies and have no issues. But for someone loading in thinking it's a COD zombies experience, what they are presented with is an alternate experience of what they came to know. Now with all the failed decisions that were made, instead of just leaving it at that and hating on it, look at those decisions that were made and ask yourself, what was this trying to accomplish or solve? This is where the game can make up for its failures and turn a negative into something successful or positive. BO4 has finally begun to make people think about new possibilities for the genre instead of always just saying, go back to how it's always been. Take the gameplay balance issue we just talked about between easter eggs and high rounding. BO4 was trying to close out one story while beginning another, which is a whole other discussion in itself. However, that focus became so heavy we now know where the balance point is between core gameplay and easter eggs quest and storytelling. With this idea in mind, let's look at some other decisions around BO4 Zombies and see what else we can learn. Difficulties. Not the first time we've seen this in a zombie's experience. But the failure of this iteration of them is that they were purely artificial. In a game designed for a more casual experience, difficulties give advanced players new ways to play that challenge them for their own definitions of fun and rewards. When we say that difficulty is artificial, what we mean is that things are added purely to annoy the player instead of forcing them into more of a threat. Two things that the difficulties did get right is how the player health changes and the amount of XP earned that the player receives. However, the increased health at the start of the game and the number of zombies per round at the start of the game is the artificial aspect. In zombies, difficulty exists more in situations where you have to play at the game's pace. So if the player can still control the pace of the game, there is no significant change to the difficulty. Think of it like a runner in a marathon. 
the runner could be in a race and the race transitions from a smooth road to a really bumpy country road and while that could be annoying to the runner the runner still has full control of everything and they can still play at their own pace now imagine a truck shows up behind the runner and the truck starts trying to run them over the runner is then forced to go to the pace of the truck instead of what they wish to do zombies needs more trucks in it trying to run people over instead of the bumpy roads for difficulties and that is one thing that i hope bo 4 zombies has shown a better light on game modes just as difficulties this is not a new idea but the modes we got were new in themselves first we're going to take a look at mutations the best way to answer the question of what is this trying to accomplish is to let players play the game they want if the base version does not satisfy exactly what they are looking for. For a first true iteration of allowing players full control over in-game settings, Treyarch did an amazing job. Yes, there are little things here and there that could be better, more defined options, but overall, this is not a bad iteration whatsoever. The issue is in a game that is so focused for easter eggs, not allowing easter eggs to be active inside of it simultaneously kills any potential use for it. If mutations is to truly be a mode that can allow anything to happen, allow the player to make any choice they want to play the version of the game they wish, everything needs to be allowed within it, no matter what. This mode single-handedly has the most potential for zombies to date, and I hope because of all the hate that Black Ops 4 does sadly receive, something like this doesn't just get swept under the rug with it all. This is why we need to look at the game from a different perspective and analyze things differently. Next up is Rush Mode. If Mutations was what had the most potential, Rush Mode by far was the most polished thing from Black Ops 4 Zombies and was done tremendously well. The reason the mode performed so well is it was designed for fun over being competitive. Not only is it just fun, it's a condensed mode of all aspects of Zombies, so it really is the full experience. It honestly could even be turned into a well-made competitive mode simply by adding a ranking system if it wanted to. The biggest point I just want to iterate again though is that the mode was designed for fun, essentially a party mode. With that in mind, let's look at Gauntlet. In theory, it was a great idea, but the final execution ended up being mind scratching. Designed in the opposite of what Rush was, it was made to be difficult and competitive, which ended up being its own failure. The only challenge was the first time when you were learning what the specific challenges were. When reattempting and knowing what the challenges were upcoming, all difficulty is removed because if the player knows what's coming, they can prepare beforehand, and this ties back into the discussion we had about difficulty as a whole. The other aspect of its failure is, once you complete the full gauntlet, nothing new comes out of it and it's the same experience every time. Now it's designed that way so it can be competitive, but at the same time, people play these extra modes for fun. Those who wish to push things the extra mile will do it on their own and make their own competitions out of it. Now there are some simple solutions that allow fun to exist as the main mode and then competition to as well exist, but for that, you're gonna have to wait to another video where I do a deep dive into difficulties and competitiveness. To wrap up the discussion on gauntlets even, we do need to address hard mode versions of gauntlet. We only ever got one of it and it was for the Voyager the Spare gauntlet. The idea of having different difficulties, which ties back into earlier as well, is not a bad idea. It's something to reward advanced players for more of a challenge. But in that same discussion, it goes to show that the understanding of what makes zombies difficult needs to be rethought and reworked because this mode was not it and it was a waste of resources internally. I'm not sure how it made it past checks and balances, but this is the most negative thing you will ever see me say on anything because, oh my God, I don't know how that actually got put into a game. Rewards. As in any game, rewards are always a must to include. 
and encourages players to play the game in different ways they normally wouldn't, as well as to show off hard accolades they've accomplished. Rewards should scale to all degrees, but as well, the most difficult task should reward the most exclusive items. First, we need to discuss Easter egg rewards. Interesting topic, because they do but don't exist in this game, and this is in reference to the free doors reward. It is unclear if this is some unintentional bug, since it only exists on some maps, but the idea is interesting, since BO4 Easter Egg design ends the game once you complete it. The question then becomes, in a game that is so Easter Egg focused, is this fulfilling enough for players? It definitely allows you to go back and experience the maps differently since you have extra points to spend. But again, since it's not available on all maps, the reward seems lacking. We also need to look at Classified specifically to where its Easter Egg reward is high rounding. Another interesting idea that was not bad to explore, but again, a game which is designed for all people to have access to the story, so the thrill of actually high rounding was diminished and also even led to it being found by those wishing to cheat instead. Easter Egg design is another topic I could really go down the rabbit hole on. So it's going to be another video coming in the future that I really do a deep dive on. But for now, I'll TLDR it in regards to Black Ops 4. Easter Egg rewards explored new interesting ideas and even trying to mix in core gameplay elements like high rounding with the Easter Eggs. However, the imbalance of everyone should experience the story over gameplay elements came back to hurt all the rewards the most. Two other reward systems I want to focus on for Black Ops 4 are Dark Matter and Dark Ops. For Dark Matter, honestly, this fits Zombies mode perfectly, and I was overly happy to grind for it. It gave me a reason to mindlessly just kill zombies while I chilled with people on stream. We don't know the words to the song. I don't know and gave me vibes of old school zombies in a new era. The only issue I have with it, and this was a very common amongst the entire game, was why did every mode's dark matter look the same? If every mode's camo is different and only earnable through that mode specifically, it makes not just the reward more interesting, but the mode itself. Taking a mode exclusive camo into another mode, then people see it and are like, that's cool, how did you get that? It then encourages players to go play a mode to earn that thing that they think is cool. But if all the camos look the same, what's the point honestly? Since I only play zombies, it didn't really bother me, but it has so much potential that I hope that potential is realized and doesn't just get thrown to the side where in today's day and age, most cool rewards are only just microtransactions instead. Next up is Dark Ops. One thing it does accomplish well is what I just discussed about Dark Matter not doing well. Completing difficult accolades in one mode to show off in that mode and others. Here's the issue with BO4's version of Dark Ops though. They aren't difficult. I can't say anything about other modes, but for Zombies, Dark Ops it became a you'll get it eventually reward instead of look at the badass thing that I did. Before people get mad at me, yes, I know three of the 12 are actual difficult challenges in regards to the base game map Easter eggs, but they all should be to that pedigree. We already have a level 1000 system, which is a representation of time played. Do we really need a challenge that's 1 million zombie kills? Let Dark Ops be a challenge that advanced players can obtain and people wanting to improve their game then strive for. The system became too casualized and as a result the rewards just don't seem as appealing to grind for. And just to sneak this in at the end of the rewards conversation, I do want to mention the leaderboards. Yes, these can be considered rewarding for players who like to be competitive. Online leaderboards are often and almost always hacked and glitched and I understand the reasoning to make it friends only, but I think that caused more imbalance to the game even. As much as the leaderboards are hacked, you can still always tell where the real players begin. Also for leaderboards, it's not always about having to be the number one slot. 
It's also just can be saying you're in the top 100 or the top 1000 even. Having a way to measure your best against the world can be rewarding in itself and definitely a feature that I think this title proved is more valuable than it seemed in the past. Now we are going to start talking about some of the gameplay specific decisions and everything that can be taken from them. First, we are going to look at the point system. I'd like to start off by saying this was by far the most confusing thing to change about the game. It is possible this was a result of the development hell that the game went through and the traditional system couldn't work on this engine, but for argument's sake, let's just assume the change was made intentionally. The only question I could think was trying to be answered would be, the player always has a surplus of extra points with nothing to spend them on, so what can we do to solve this? Which isn't a bad question at all to ask, but the execution to remove instead of add confuses me. Instead of limiting the points, why not add more systems into the game for the player to spend points on? A great example is what the final iteration of Gobblegums did in Black Ops 3. It was always giving the player something to spend their points on, which is the idea I think is a better approach. Another issue with the new point system is it created a stagnant weapon meta. With the old system, even if a gun is horribly weak and just to be honest bad, it still had some value in the fact that you could earn points with it to spend elsewhere. The new point system, however, only prioritizes weapons that are effective at killing, so anything that is subpar is seen as completely worthless, and the viable weapon pool is shrunk tenfold as a result. To continue this discussion of weapons and points in tandem, we need to talk about the Pack-a-Punch system as well. The Pack-a-Punch system is a great way for the player to put their extra points towards something useful. The only issue is it needs to feel useful putting points into it. BO4 definitely did a multi-pack idea better than what Advanced Warfare did, but the same feeling still exists even that every time you upgrade, the difference is barely noticeable. I'm not saying that every upgrade needs to be a game-breaking damage, but the value does not seem worth the cost. I will caveat all this though and mention one very important part. The Pack-a-Punch system is much more effective in feeling valued on Chaos maps as opposed to Ether. In Chaos maps, if you match the right AAT against the right Catalyst Zombie, you get a slight damage boost from causing a reactive explosion. This obviously doesn't exist in Ether maps since Catalyst Zombies don't reside there. This causes an entire aspect of the Pack-a-Punch system to not even exist on Ether maps, which causes Pack-a-Punch to feel even more worthless on Ether. This idea will return again in terms of Chaos vs. Ether when we discuss the perk system in a little bit, so keep it as food for thought. But overall, the point is that the Pack-a-Punch system only feels valued in half of the game as a result. Now let's discuss the Specialist system in BO4 as the next hot topic. This is by far the biggest system in the game that casualizes the experience so anybody can enjoy it but it did bring up some interesting new ideas to go alongside it. Having a system that is designed to level up by just killing is a great addition in the zombies since that goes alongside the core idea of the mode. The question that is brought up though is just how balanced should specials be in terms of weapon balancing? Should they be to the degree of wonder weapons or should they just be extra abilities like what we had in Extinction or World War II? Also, should these specialists be earned through gameplay or just given to you at the start? Each side of each of these questions have very good pros and cons for them. The biggest fault for Black Ops 4 specifically though is the fact that every specialist weapon had a get out of jail free activation effect. Now if one singular specialist had that and only that ability, it wouldn't be that bad and could be balanced. But Every specialist being able to clear all the zombies around you and then have the killing power of a wonder weapon is very unbalanced. Much like how in BO4 we learned the true balance between core gameplay and easter egg design, we have now learned that there needs to be a balance between wonder weapons and the specialist system if both wish to exist in the ecosystem. Now, last but definitely not least, comes by far the biggest debate in regards to Black Ops 4. The decision for some people that this makes the game unplayable and it became an abomination against man himself. 
the perk system. Or should I really say just the perk machine system? Because, oh my lord, people have blown this out of proportion, acting like perks work completely different and they're completely unusable in the game when that's not the case at all. First, let's figure out what the question being asked behind these decisions were. The first being, players always use the same four perks, so how can we get them to use more variety? This is a great question to ask and answer, because perks have been unchanged and stale from Mortal War to World War II. As great as a question as it was to ask, the answer they chose was by far the worst decision. They simply chose to just remove them. The problem is, they removed them, but then re-added them through other means. While I understand the sentiment, why not just leave them in the game at that point? No matter what perks get removed, there's always going to be a meta that people default to, so the same issues still exist. The solution is to give people reasons to use other perks. What are those reasons? Well, it goes along with what I've been teasing before, but I have a new perk system designed that I think will be good that I've been working on over the last year plus. But as everything else, wait till another video so I can go into it in a lot more detail. One idea that I do hope continues forward from Black Ops 4 is the idea of perks upgrading and having more abilities. As much as I don't like the modifier slot specifically, perks evolving over time can make a game feel like it continues to evolve even when you've been in a game for two plus hours, making it feel fresh and sometimes even like a completely new game. We now need to look at another question that is being asked in regards to the perk changes. That question is, should the player have control over which perks are in a game? Again, this is another great question, and pre-Black Ops 4, you know everyone would have said yes to this question. And for those of you sitting there saying, no, I wouldn't have, you are lying to yourself and being a hypocrite. Anyway, something we learned from Black Ops 4 that we took advantage of in the past is the personality of the perk machines themselves. They help create a map's personality and become parts of the map. Callouts for certain maps would even just become perk locations on them, and this was partially missing from Black Ops 4. This new perk machine system is only bad on the ether maps, to where it succeeds on chaos. Much like how the Pack-a-Punch system is better designed for chaos, the perk machines of the gods have a certain personality to them, like perk machines of old ether. They have that same feeling of being able to use them as a callout because they stand out and are unique. Ether, on the other hand, this is where the new system causes problems. Since all the maps are just remakes and reimaginings, we as players mentally expect certain perks to be in certain places and have those same callouts. However, with the new machine system, we have doll machines with no personality on Ether, so it makes frustrating to remember what and where they actually are. Personally, I'd like to see a combo of the old new perk ideas as a whole have maps that have the physical perk machines for each specific perk, but then allow the Wonder Fizz machine to be completely customizable and select which perks can exist in it specifically. That way, the natural feel of certain perks on the map are there, but as new perks get introduced into the, the game, you can slot those into the Wonder Fizz and have different experiences on those maps. All in all, the perk system for BO4 is not as big of a deal as people have tried to make it. It just became the focal point of people to grip onto to hate it. Is it perfect? No. But it's also not the end of the world either. If you've made it to this part of the video, I want to congratulate you on trying to view zombies in a new perspective. I know I probably did lots of rambling, and I'm hoping this this all came across as neutral as possible, not trying to be too positive or too negative. I've wanted to try and convey this idea that Black Ops 4 is a good mode, just not the perfect zombies mode, for a while, and I've never quite figured out the best way to phrase a lot of this. I like BO4 Zombies. When you play it for what it is instead of what's in another game, you can honestly enjoy it. Also, if you don't enjoy the mode, that is perfectly fine as well. You are allowed to not like something. But don't be a pompous ass and try to ruin something others can enjoy. The best thing that BO4 did give us is it got people trying to think creatively again instead of just accepting what everything was and staying stagnant. 
Here soon, I want to start up a series looking into the different aspects of what the COD Zombies formula is, and to wrap it all up with my perfect version of the mode. However, for this video, I want to close it off with one topic that I want to make a statement on, and I didn't mention it before because, well, you'll figure it out. It sucks we never got factions. It sucks we were led on to believe it was going to happen like Lex's 1 million sub special. However, we never actually got to play it, so stop acting like it's in the game and it makes the game worse. If it was in the game and we got to experience it, it would be one thing. But the game is finished. It can, it's complete. So move on with your life and accept the game for what is in it. Have a good day. Don't forget, make the smart decisions.